So within, you know, a day after the earthquake, it started to fill up little by little with people. Mostly they were just camping out under sheeted tents, just with some wood and, and covered by, by a regular sheet or plastic or whatever they could find. I mean, it's just amazing because just a week ago, all of this was, sheet, was people with sheet over the sticks. And it's just transformed into like, like look at that, like people, that's a little store selling, you know. Liquor and cigarettes. People are gonna, people recognize they're gonna be living here for a long time. And so a lot of the things are just reclaimed from the damaged buildings around the city, mostly made out of wood, some tin. And every single day that I come here, there are more and more and more and more people. Now I think there's probably about 30 or 35,000 people here. I think that as everyone realizes how slow shelter and tents are in coming, they've kind of um, resigned themselves to deal with things themselves. The health issues range from malaria in Haiti, uh, so that's nighttime mosquitoes. There's dengue fever in the city, especially daytime mosquitoes. Uh, there certainly be problems of rats. Malnutrition, just because people don't have access to proper food. Um, then when you look at people living very close together, there are problems around sanitation. You know, bad sanitation goes along with diarrheal disease, with typhoid, and just with general, um, you know, misery, to be honest, uh, living around bad sanitation and uh, the smells. It also brings flies and brings more mosquitoes. The other issue, it's more a safety issue, is the fire hazard in a place like this is absolutely huge. People's houses are very, very close together. Now they're made of wood, but many of them are still plastic or sheeting, like sheets from your bed and uh, people cook with open fires with charcoal so the risk and then they're burning rubbish as well so in the dry season where everything's kind of tinder ready um, it's really really concerning to me and lots of other people that there would be a major fire in one of these settlement areas Dami La Santé started initially what we were calling mobile clinics here but really what they are um, are comprehensive primary health care posts Okay, so the triage area is over there, they're waiting. So they get triaged either here or over here. We're kind of scaling up, so we started the first day, we saw about 700 people on the very first day because people had not had healthcare at all for a few weeks. And now it's become a little bit less. So we've made um, like a, what we're calling health passport. So that allows the next time they get seen by any organization that they'll have their medical record written down there. We have a team of about 20 doctors, nurses, lab technician, pharmacist, and we do primary health care with reproductive health and women's health, uh, HIV testing, and each day we're kind of adding more of services to what we're doing. So we want to avoid now just doing first aid where we're bandaging wounds or things like that. And get into comprehensive primary health care. Because these people are going to be living here for a long time. And they know that before anyone else has admitted it, because they're, they're putting up their posts and their, their houses. Uh, so they're going to need primary health care. The sound of people hitting like their tin, it just to me, that just represents like, I don't know, the resilience of Haitians because they're like, we're here, we're still here. It, it's just like they've accepted the fact that they're not going anywhere. So let, let me build a small shelter and do the best that I can. 